So uh, hello, everyone. Uh, it's good to see folks out in the audience. It's good to have folks make a fairly, fairly early keynote. But um, today, I'm going to talk a little bit about some updates from the uh, Cloud Native Computing Foundation, which I helped uh, form a couple of years ago when I joined uh, the Linux Foundation uh, formally. So to give you a little bit of history, the CNCF was formed in about uh, mid-2015 with the simple mission of bringing a form of computing called cloud native computing uh, essentially to the world. And you know, when I say cloud native, um, I essentially refer to the type of computing that has been pioneered by internet scale companies such as Google, Facebook, Twitter, and so on, who have essentially been running microservices-based architectures that run in containers that are essentially orchestrated by some you know, central process you know, over you know, you know, hundreds of thousands of machines. And so you know, this is the type of computing um, you know, you know, that I refer to when I say cloud-native computing. So you know, when we were founded in mid-2015, we started with a, uh, a humble set of uh, 22 members and a kind of a very uh, basic mi you know, mission statement. And uh, at the time, Google also seeded the project with Kubernetes, which um, I'm sure some of you may have heard of that project. Yeah, everyone knows what Kubernetes is, I'm assuming. Yes, yeah, it's been, you'd be surprised a couple years ago, not, not too many people knew what Kubernetes was. But you know, it was good. We were started with 22 members. Um, I'm happy to announce two years later, um, roughly, we've had some great growth. So, you know, we have basically over 5x growth in terms of uh, membership within uh, CNCF. Today, we have about 118 members, and I'm super stoked, essentially, to have all these uh, companies involved, basically trying to move forward the cloud-native uh, mission. And, you know, if you kind of step back a little bit, um, I think this is really the first time in the history uh, of, of open source, especially in the infrastructure space, that we have really the top five leading cloud, public cloud providers in the world sitting at the same, same foundation table um, driving uh, cloud native forward. So I'm super stoked to, uh, to have that happen. But for some of you uh, that may have been paying attention on the previous slide, um, you know, we do have new members that occasionally come uh, and join us within the CNCF family. So uh, today I would like to um, announce one of those, and I would like to welcome uh, John Middlehauser uh, from Oracle to talk a little bit about uh, what's going on on their side of the world in cloud native land. So welcome, John. Thanks, Chris. Um, as Chris said, we have joined CNCF. So the announcement is fairly self-explanatory. Um, I am VP of engineering of a group within Oracle who's uh, Charter is to drive cloud-native development, um, all the developer tools, so we're very active. We've been active for a while. We've been kind of unofficially members, um, and I'm proud to announce that we are now officially a Platinum member, um, and I am on the governing board as well as uh, everybody else who is up on that stage. So um, we have a couple of announcements today of specific products, and then we have more coming that we'll announce soon. Um, specifically, here, I'll go through these. Um, you know, I, I think the obvious question is why we joined, and I think the answer is fairly obvious. We believe strongly that developers need an open, cloud-neutral, and community-driven native technology stack, container-native. Um, avoiding cloud lock-in, enabling hybrid mode between cloud and on-prem, um, and obviously that gives that technical business flexibility that you guys are looking for. So, We've been embracing this for a while. Um, CNCF is clearly the main hub for that. Kubernetes is kind of an anchor of some of the work we're doing, and um, a bunch of the other technologies as well uh, coming soon. So today, specifically, um, we're announcing two products, or two releases, uh, the first of which is the Kubernetes install. This is Terraform scripts for Oracle's cloud infrastructure, or, uh, what we've been calling bare metal cloud is now rebranded as Oracle cloud infrastructure. Um, fairly self-explanatory, it's Terraform scripts that create highly available Kubernetes control planes, um, clusters, et cetera, on uh, bare metal. So for existing customers, easy way to get up and running with Kubernetes on Oracle on bare metal cloud. Secondly, announcing Kubernetes on Oracle Linux, um, public, ah, for public, private cloud, and on-prem. So, you know, customers running Oracle Linux, um, Kubernetes trivial installation. Uh, 
freely available to download, and specifically, we give Premier support when you deploy it on our cloud infrastructure. Most of these are just teasers, though. Um, you know, we've been active in a bunch of these communities. Those of you who've been in the working groups have seen us start to show up. We're, uh, we have a lot of contributions in the pipe around security, around federation, networking, conformance. I was in the working group for that yesterday under Kubernetes. Um, as many of you guys know, we have our big conference coming up in three weeks, the beginning of October. So look for some major announcements at Oracle Open World at Java One. Um, we'll also be at KubeCon as, as sponsors. Um, so we're very happy to be part of this community. Um, it's not just Kubernetes for us. Uh, my group is also leveraging a bunch of other technologies, Prometheus, Open Tracing, gRPC, and some of the things that are gonna get announced right after this. So, um, happy to be part of the community. Uh, obviously, if you guys have questions, follow up with me afterwards, and uh, I'll hand it back to Chris. Thank you, John. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Um, so, you know, for those who are counting, now with Oracle part of uh, CNCF officially, that is the top six, uh, you know, leading public cloud providers in the world. So, um, members are great, but really the lifeblood of CNCF are its projects. So, and honestly, my favorite part of, of, of CNCF. So, um, currently today, we have 10 amazing projects in CNCF. Kubernetes, obviously, uh, you know, our seed project, one of our most popular projects, but we have projects in the spaces of monitoring with Prometheus, tracing with open tracing, logging with Fluent D, uh, Container D, Core Container Runtime, Rocket, and so on. So we have a lot of these um, awesome projects that we've kind of mapped out uh, and kind of brought into CNCF uh, over the last uh, you know couple of years. And you know, to me, it's really amazing to see how how things have grown. As as I mentioned earlier, uh, two years ago, not many people really knew what you know Kubernetes is, and uh, the amount of adoption that Kubernetes has seen in the industry in the last couple of years is, is phenomenal. So I'd like to kind of, you know, point out one crazy thing. I don't know if people saw this. It was like a couple of weeks ago, I think, was Kubernetes, where the source code lives on GitHub, now GitHub itself is, is you know, running Kubernetes. So it's like Kubernetes is like honestly self-hosted on itself, which to me is like absolutely amazing. So, um, you know, they've also wrote a great blog post on kind of how they're moving their infrastructure and how they got there. So um, I highly recommend you uh, taking a read of that. Uh, it's, you know, super, uh, super uh, amazing in, in my opinion. Um, another thing that we've done is, you know, uh, you know, one thing with CNCF is, you know, we're all about, you know, our, our projects and, and cloud native, and we kind of have this uh, landscape diagram that, you know, people either love or hate, but, you know, I, I think it's really important to show that um, there are many aspects of cloud native. Um, there are many ways, I think, to get to uh, cloud native uh, for your company. Obviously, we think that CNCF projects are, you know, battle tested and generally well proven, um, but, you know, you know, those are essentially a set of recommendations. Here's a guide on how you potentially may get to cloud native with a list of projects that are kind of uh, sponsored and blessed by CNCF. But for, um, you know, those of you who look a little bit deeper in the, in the diagram, there are sections in there where um, there are, you know, potentially um, missing projects that necessarily aren't part of, you know, CNCF. So, um, you know, I'm happy to announce today that uh, we're going to fill the gap uh, in some of these areas, uh, and we're going to hear from some, uh, you know, new projects uh, in, in a little bit. So, um, uh, first to uh, announce, and I'd like to introduce um, the Envoy project uh, will be coming into CNCF. Um, uh, it will be our 11th project, and to learn a little bit more exactly about what Envoy is, I would like to uh, invite uh, Chris Lambert on the stage, uh, the CTO uh, of Lyft, to tell us a little bit mo more. So thank you, Chris. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. <clears throat> so uh, I'm here to talk about Envoy, but first I want to talk a little bit about the origin story for um, how we started development of Envoy and the problem it was solving for us. So going back to 2012, uh, Lyft was just a small startup, a uh, handful of engineers uh, all working together on the same code base, the same service, uh, and it was a relatively straightforward system. You hit a button, someone comes, picks you up, takes you wherever you want to go. Uh, that worked great in 2012, but uh, our growth was, uh, was pretty crazy, both for the number of engineers, the number of rides, and the number of markets. 
and we quickly outgrew this single service model and, and started moving away from our monolith to a microservice architecture. Uh, and initially, this worked out really well, um, but we started to run into some pain points. So uh, tw 2012, we were doing a few thousand rides a week. Uh, 2017, we're now doing uh, over a million rides per day. So pretty massive growth, and uh, along with that, we've seen pretty massive growth in our, our service infrastructure as well. So it started as one, micro, or one service, uh, where everything lived in the same code base and was deployed together, is now a set of 200 plus microservices, uh, all communicating with each other um, over the network. And one of the pain points that we encountered was that when something goes wrong, it's not obvious where the problem is. It could be the physical network, the virtual network, could be your upstream service, downstream service. And we spent a fair amount of time trying to debug problems in the microservice architecture without knowing where the failure points were. Um, and we ended up in this scenario where there were certain key pieces of functionality that we wanted to keep in the monolith just because we couldn't reliably trust the network as we started to move functionality uh, into these microservices. So that's obviously not ideal and, and pretty prohibitive to what we were trying to do. So we set out to, to solve this problem, um, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't straightforward. And we looked at the open source community and said, what, what are the options out there that could work for us? And we didn't really see a great fit. Um, one of the things that, that's unique is that when you hit uh, set pickup and request a ride and go through that process, you're actually talking to 100 different services under the hood, all written in different languages, uh, run by different teams. And we really wanted to have a consistent set of metrics and, and reliability um, monitoring on all these systems uh, as we move things out of the monolith. So our fundamental guiding um, philosophy as we set out to solve the problem is that the network sh should be transparent to applications. Uh, we don't want you to worry about what's happening in the network. We want it to just work. And if it doesn't, we want to make it really obvious uh, to the developer where the problem is. So with that, we built Envoy. And this is a really lightweight architecture diagram uh, just to go through how, how it works. Is We built Envoy as a sidecar that sits alongside all of your application servers. So for us, it's also our front proxy that handles all incoming connections from the mobile clients but it also sits alongside every upstream and downstream service and handles all inner service communication. Uh, and what that does, it gives us uh, incredible insight into how services are performing um, and where problems are. It's also given us a powerful uh, platform to build on top of where it's not just service to service communication, we've been able to instrument our data stores, whether it's DynamoDB or MongoDB or Redis, using the same infrastructure to give us the same insights on performance, which is pretty amazing. So there's a lot more to say about Envoy, uh, but we started work on it in 2015, and about a year ago today, we open sourced it. Uh, and it's pretty, uh, pretty amazing year. Uh, we, we open sourced it thinking, you know, maybe we'll get some other startups excited about it, and, and they'll help us kind of maintain the project. And within a year, uh, we've seen some pretty massive adoption. Everyone here is actively using or contributing to Envoy, uh, and we now have more people at companies like Google that are actively developing Envoy than we do in-house at Lyft. So, Pretty amazing, um, and, and definitely not something we take for granted. But we've realized that Envoy is now, this is much bigger than Lyft, and it's, it's, uh, there's a lot at stake here. So we're really excited to announce our donation to CNCF today uh, to make Envoy part of this community and, and to really help move the industry forward. Um, so really excited to, to make that official and excited for all the support that, that CNCF has given us to date and really looking forward to, to partnership with, with our peer projects over the next few years. Um, one last thing I'll leave you with is uh, Envoy has been really instrumental uh, in our work on the cloud to date, um, but we have big plans at Lyft. Uh, we've, we just started a new level five engineering center focused on a, autonomous vehicle development in Palo Alto. Uh, Envoy's already proven pretty, pretty helpful there, and we've got big plans. So if that's interesting to you, definitely come talk to us. Uh, we'd love to have your help, and we're hiring all across the country. So thanks again for having me, and look forward to the next few years. Awesome. Uh, thank you, Chris. Super exciting. Um, I'm a huge fan of Envoy. So um, I mentioned that uh, you know, we're going to have a couple projects. So first, we had Envoy uh, come up. And uh, we'll, we have another uh, major announcement today. So um, I would like to uh, announce that <laughs> we have a, another project coming at CNCF called Jaeger. It uh, has a very cute logo. I'm a huge uh, little fan. Um, <laughs> of, of, of that logo. We'll see how that looks on the CNCF website, but um, I would like to have um, 
uh, Yuri uh, from Uber to come up on stage and talk uh, a little bit about Jaeger and uh, what it's all about. So uh, please welcome Yuri Shirko from uh, Uber. Oh, hello. Um, hi, everyone. Um, thank you for having me. I'm very excited to present Jaeger. Um, so, um, I'm a staff engineer at Uber. Uh, I've been there about two years, and that's about the time when we started Jaeger. Um, and uh, my story uh, will be somewhat very similar to what um, uh, Lyft had in terms of how that project came to be. It just solves sli slightly different problem, but uh, came from the same kind of backgrounds. Um, so uh, as you probably all know, Uber um, has seen uh, insane growth in the past two years. Um, and um, I remember just uh, like not long ago, we, we've hit a milestone of one billion uh, completed trips on Uber. And um, a few months ago, we hit, we hit five billion, and then we like heading towards 10 billion trips. Um, so with all that uh, growth, and it's not just trips, there are other uh, business lines, obviously, like Uber Eats for food delivery, Uber Rush for package delivery. So all that uh, caused us to build uh, like a lot of new features in the system and create a lot of complexity in the system. Um, and at the same time, we needed that system um, to be scalable, to be reliable, and we needed to keep the uh, developer velocity up. So uh, fortunately, containers and microservices were invented, and uh, our engineering kind of embraced that uh, paradigm, and we moved into that space. Um, and as a result, um, today, Uber architecture uh, contains um, like several thousand microservices. So this is just a... Um, kind of a segment of, of the dependency graph that's generated by Jaeger. <clears throat> um, so every time you take a trip, um, seem like you've seen on a, on a lift slide where like you take a ride, but even actually when you're on the ride, the application always talks to the backend. Like every few seconds, there is something communication going on, and there are transactions happening across a whole bunch of microservices, whether it's to get a new root update, new ETA, uh, maybe you're picking up another rider on the pool. Um, so all those transactions hit in a whole bunch of different services. And uh, in order to uh, maintain the complexity uh, of that system, and, and that's happening like billions of times a day, right? So to keep that system working, we have to monitor it uh, in, in a very robust way. And um, uh, at Uber, when, when we started doing like very intensive monitoring, we had to build our own metric system because there's nothing on uh, open source or in, in commercial that could scale. Um, but metrics, uh, they're great for monitoring, but like, if you think about metrics, like every one of those nodes in a, in a diagram is, uh, is kind of, that's what metrics tell you. They're just like small little story about one single uh, uh, node in the, in the architecture. They don't tell you the whole picture. Of, they don't tell you anything about the transaction happening across the architecture. And that's where um, Jaeger comes in. Jaeger is a distributed tracing system um, which essentially traces uh, transactions. Um, and uh, it allows us to solve other problems as well. So when something goes wrong, um, we can uh, look at traces and uh, deep dive, like follow the path of the transaction and, and so usually find the root cause of what's wrong with a the, with the particular request. Um, or if things are slow, then you can also like, analyze critical paths and um, find out why things are slow. Sometimes the, the system can just point you to the root cause directly. Um, the service dependency diagram that I showed before, that's very useful for developers to even understand what this whole architecture is doing. Like, no one can keep in their mind, like, several thousand microservices and all their interactions is what they're doing. So, um, it's very important. Uh, but, uh, on, on, on um, all of those functions are actually made available by the uh, generic context propagation layer that uh, client uh, uh, Jaeger libraries provide. Um, and um, this is a feature that has been like in tracing always, but somewhere in the background, uh, we brought it on top of, we built a lot of features on top of that. Um, so uh, a bit of a history. Um, Jaeger, uh, as, as a system, was inspired by Google's uh, Dapper paper and OpenZipkin a project which came out of Twitter. Um, we started about two years ago, and we open sourced it uh, uh, in, in spring, so it's a fairly young project. Um, we built it with open tracing support from the beginning. We're actually uh, one of the founding uh, members of the open tracing, um, another CNCF project. 
<clears throat> and uh, in terms of technology, um, we it's it's like we go shop uh, in New York City. So uh, most of our backend in Jaeger is written in Go. We support pluggable storage. So we implemented Cassandra and Elasticsearch backends, but we, we're working on other ones if like people are interested in some like InfluxDB uh, and maybe uh, other uh, backends. Uh, React uh, frontend. Uh, the instrumentation libraries are really what. Uh, um, most of the people are exposed to because that goes into your applications and um, open tracing is the standard that we embraced early on. Um, our community uh, has been growing since, since open source. Uh, we were lucky to get uh, partners in Red Hat. Uh, they've been contributing uh, a lot of features already to Jaeger. And uh, between us and the Red Hat, we have full 10, like 10 full-time developers working on Jaeger. Um, all the time, uh, and we have a number of contributors on GitHub from other companies, as well as many other companies already using Jaeger today. Um, this is a screenshot um, uh, of Jaeger front end. Um, it shows you kind of the uh, sample trace view. On the left, you see the hierarchy of the calls, the call graph, the, the time sequence diagram at the bottom is like uh, one of the segments shows what, what details about this particular uh, service or particular operation within the service is doing. This is kind of the, the things that help you root cause analysis uh, by drilling down into the execution of the transactions across the stack. Um, so uh, at Uber, uh, Jaeger has been integrated with uh, over a thousand services today. Uh, we use it for obvious uh, features of tracing like root cause analysis and dependency analysis, but we also, as I mentioned, uh, build a lot of functionality on just a general context propagation facility provided by Jaeger. Um, and we're also uh, now uh, focusing a lot on the data mining part of, of, um, of actually getting insight from tracing data in aggregates rather than just uh, looking at individual traces, because that really tells you a lot about how your architecture is behaving uh, when it's a uh, when you have so many services. Um, the roadmap for Jaeger is, uh, you can find it online, I'm not gonna go through that. Um, um, some of these things are already in progress, some will be coming up, uh, and um, we, we welcome uh, help and uh, other suggestions that people want to see in, in our project. Um, and definitely very exciting to join CNCF. Um, CNCF mission is kind of to provide a set of standard tools for people deploying uh, cloud infrastructures, and we want Jaeger to become one of those standard tools. I firmly believe that in any microservices, moderately complex microservices architecture, uh, you cannot survive without distributed tracing. You simply don't have the visibility into what your application is doing. Um, and we are also um, looking forward to integrating with other CNCF projects. We already can run on Kubernetes. We, we get traces from Envoys. Uh, we, we can send metrics to Prometheus, but uh, we're looking for more integrations as well. And uh, as I mentioned, all contributions are welcome. And um, Uber is still growing. Our engineering team in New York is happy to, uh, to see more people. So if you're interested in what we're doing, uh, come talk to me. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you, Yuri. Distributed tracing is, 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 is amazing. And, and to me, it's really great to now have 12 uh, projects as part of the uh, CNCF family. So uh, just live right now, we went back and updated that wonderful landscape diagram. So now you have uh, Envoy and Jaeger uh, part of that. So you know, I'm so glad to have these projects um, you know, part of CNCF. Um, I love all of our projects equally. I've actually been taking an Uber and Lyft on a rotating basis all uh, all week. Uh, so it's been uh, it's been great to have these uh, two projects involved with us. So, uh, you know, I'll want to kind of basically end things off is that we have a big conference coming up uh, in Austin in December, which is my hometown, which is great. It's great not to actually travel for an event. Woo! -hoo! Um, so hopefully, uh, some of you could actually come. Uh, to Austin, attend CloudNativeCon and KubeCon and come learn a little bit more about uh, the different CNCF projects we uh, have out there and come meet uh, and learn about the future of uh, essentially cloud infrastructure. So uh, thank you very much uh, for your time and uh, I'm gonna hand it back to uh, Jim to, to kind of move us forward through the day. So thank you very much. Thank you.